While researched, it builds on a proven resource base. San Jacinto is located 116 kilometers from Managua. Uh, we're about 20 minutes from the uh, city of Leon, uh, which is to the north of Managua. Um, it's set in a, in a very rural setting. There's uh, cattle and, and some um, uh, crop raising that, that goes on here. Uh, no industry in the area. San Jacinto currently has 10 megawatts installed and operating. We're producing uh, about 8 megawatts using steam that's available from wells that had already been drilled uh, on the project. Um, we've got that, stage, that first stage up and running very successfully and we're now drilling uh, new production wells ready to expand our production up to 72 megawatts in this sector of the resource. The technology for geothermal is basically quite simple. We have the choice on most of the good projects of uh, using condensing steam turbines or back pressure steam turbines. The back pressure turbine discharges to atmosphere. Not very efficient, but it's uh, easy to install, very quick to install, and that's what we've done with the first stage of our project here in Nicaragua. We're now moving on with the next stage we're installing condensing steam turbines which get a lot more energy from the steam when the steam is discharged to a vacuum in a condenser and that will optimize the use of the resource. Polaris has a, an association with a company called Exorca which offers what's called Kalina cycle technology. The Kalina technology that we'll be installing here at uh, San Jacinto takes the waste brine that we would put uh, straight into injection um, and it cycles it through a separate plant through some heat exchangers which take the heat out of the brine. That heat is transferred into an ammonia water mixture which in turn goes through a turbine and is then condensed and recycled so it's a closed cycle. The brine that we have cooled uh, contains silica and we don't want that to deposit in the pipelines or in the wells so we'll treat the brine with some acid to make sure that it's safe to re-inject. But it really does improve the uh, use of the energy resource, so we get the maximum benefit from it for the community here. Well, we have two strategic partnerships, one with Exorca, which is a company that uh, has Kalina technology, which we're able to use to enhance the output from our uh, projects. Uh, the other alliance we have is with Sinclair Knight Mertz uh, of New Zealand. Uh, they are arguably the world's leading geothermal development uh, specialists, offering uh, us excellent um, resources in both geoscience and um, uh, the engineering of the application of, of geothermal energy and, and the utilization. The ability to convince banks and investors um, other people with projects um, that Polaris knows what it's doing has to start with the San Jacinto project. So we've had that firmly ingrained in our objective is to get San Jacinto on stream, get the 70 megawatts up and running, get the credibility onto the table, the political table here in Nicaragua, get it um, into the minds of investors and we find that every day that we pursue this dream of a company that we started, um, we move it forward and there are investors, bankers, politicians and uh, project owners that, is, uh, that are coming to Polaris to uh, be part of the, the scheme. We actually have three sources of revenue. Um, first source of revenue is the power purchase agreement itself to an independent distributor uh, subsidiary of Union Fenosa. Uh, that power purchase agreement enables us to sell power to the grid and uh, be paid and make sure that we're the first people paid because we are base load. The second source of uh, revenue, and which really wasn't a, a part of the cash flows at the beginning, but the entire uh, carbon credit 
market uh, expanded and um, generated an enormous amount of energy. So much so that uh, there isn't a week that, that doesn't go by without some international um, carbon credit fund wanting to purchase those credits. Initially, when we did our first cash flows, uh, we, we um, didn't include any revenue, whatever, to the carbon credits. Uh, now we're easily confirming a $15 a ton uh, for uh, uh, carbon credits. Uh, our third source um, is um, actually being able to sell power to a third party, not, um, not to the power purchase agreement. That is to say, all power beyond the power purchase agreement can be sold at spot or commercial rates uh, depending on the, on, the, on the contract. At eight and a half megawatts, which we're presently doing today, being delivered to the grid, that equates to approximately $2 million a year of cash flow, of EBITDA actually. At 66 megawatts, which is the base of our power purchase agreement, and we actually increase that in light of the, the new technology that's being brought into 72 megawatts of, of um, power sold into the grid, that will equate to in excess of $33 million per annum. At 340 megawatts, that's $200 million a year of EBITDA.